Good morning, friends. Welcome back to Virtual Sunday School. So this week, I thought it would be really cool to have you come to the sanctuary with me. Normally, um, you know, Corey, who's our um, our music director here, he decorates the altar and gets it ready for Sunday. But this week, I thought I would come in and decorate the altar and get it ready. And while I'm doing it, I would show you all kind of how we get ready for church on Sunday. And um, hey, Miss Erin, is that you? Yeah, I wanted to be early because I'd like to sit in the front, but is Wednesday too early for this? Well, you know, Wednesday's a little too early, but you know what, while you're here, why don't you come help me decorate? So I saw that you put the red tablecloth on, but I think the white one looked nice with the flowers. Do we have to have the red? That is a great question. So actually, we don't just pick the color that we like that week. We actually pick the color that goes along with the church year and the church color. So this week is red because last week was Pentecost. All right, so I found some stuff here. What all do we use to decorate the altar? All right, so I've got the tablecloth on. What do I need to put on next? So next is this really heavy Bible. <laughs> This is so big and heavy. So why do I even have to put this one up here? They don't read from this one. That's a great question. Uh, so the altar itself is a sacred place and it represents who we are as Christians. The Bible has important words and stories for how to live as a follower of Jesus. And, and so we put one on the altar to honor that. You know, the pastors could read from it, but it is kind of heavy. And I think it looks nice there. I found the cross. It's kind of shiny. Can we use this? Yeah, actually, that definitely goes on the altar next. So, Erin, do, do you remember what the cross represents? Like, why would we put it on the altar? Well, I think the cross represents Jesus, and yeah. then it reminds me of the way he loves all of us. Yeah, exactly. But when we have Communion Sunday, I know there's more stuff that goes on there, but I can't quite remember. What do we need to put on there? That's a great question. So if we were gonna do communion, we would need a plate like this that would hold the bread. And so you'd put that on the altar and that would hold our bread for communion. And then next you would take this cup that would hold the juice and we would put it on the altar. So, so far, everything you've told me about on the altar, like there's a reason for it, it represents something. Is that the case for the communion stuff too? Yes, actually. So communion began when Jesus had a special meal with special people the night before he died. And he took a plate that had bread on it. And he took the bread and he held it up and he gave thanks and he thanked God. And then he handed a piece to all of his disciples and followers. And then he took the cup and he did the same thing. And he thanked God and he passed the cup around and everyone drank from it. And he said, when you do this, you will remember me. And so communion represents when we partake together in communion, we're remembering Jesus's love and sacrifice. Okay, I see the altar, but sometimes we baptize people where i feel like it happens at the front of church but where's the stuff we use for that here come this way i'll show you so over here to the side of the sanctuary we have our baptismal font that gets moved up to the front of the church for bab so this is the baptismal font we bring it up to the front and we pour water into it from our our baptismal water pitcher and we pour water in there and the pastor takes water from their hand and they place it on the child's head to be baptized. Does it only work for children or babies? What about grown-ups? Oh, that's a great question. Anyone can be baptized at any age. The only rule in the Methodist church is that you only need to get baptized one time. Check it out. I found a hat. But I think it's probably not a hat. What do you do with it? So this is the offering plate. It's what we use when we pass it down the aisle and it comes back and people can put money in here. 
and they can also put their prayer request cards in it as well. So once it's full and we passed it around the church, we put it up on the altar after we collect to represent all the donations, money, time, gift, and talents that we all do in God's name. Okay, we put these candles out, but we didn't even light them or anything. Aren't they usually lit for church? The light represents the light of Christ, which is also the gift of the Holy Spirit, which we celebrate at Pentecost. So when we bring the light into the church, we are also representing bringing in the presence of God. And so then when worship is over, the acolytes take the light out of the sanctuary like Miss Erin is doing, and it represents how we are the light of Christ going out into the world. Well, friends, that's kind of all that goes into decorating the altar for worship. You know, there were some things maybe that you saw that you hadn't learned before, or maybe there's something that you remember being in the church that we didn't talk about today, and that's okay. And so what we thought about doing that would be really fun is Miss Erin and I created a sanctuary scavenger hunt for you to be able to print out and use when you either watch worship online or come into the church. So let's go check it out. So we have the sanctuary scavenger hunt and in it you'll see nine boxes of nine different things that you can find in the sanctuary. Some of them we talked about today in the lesson and some of them you'll have to look for a little bit. You can do it at home if you're watching on TV or you can do it if you're actually at the church. So the next time you see church I want you to take a look, look for these things and when you find them, you can color that box in or exit out or draw a picture of what you saw. Do that and see if you can find all nine of these.